And everything is black, everything is black, everything is black. Black chat, black chat, black chat, black chat. You already know. We we're here, here we're here. <laughs> it's a little more intimate tonight. Um, welcome to Blab Chat. I go by the name of Illmind. What episode is this, Josh? 106. 106. Damn. Uh, I'm here with my co-host. It's your girl, know. Perfection. You already know. Perfection's in here. Um, shout to all of our producers. Um, shout to, of course, the great Atlas the Plug. Million dollars. Million dollars. <laughs> Million dollar guy. Atlas the Plug couldn't be here. Um, our girl, Glam, couldn't make it either. Uh, those are my co-hosts. And, uh, you know, they're working. They're busy. You know what I'm saying? So moving and shaking. Moving and shaking. So shout to Glam, shout to Alice. They couldn't make it today, but we're here. Uh, again, my name is Illmind. This is Perfection here. This is Blab Chat episode 106. Um, man, first of all, shout out to all of you, uh, all of you guys that are listening, all of our day one listeners, subscribers. You know, a lot of you guys are producers, engineers, artists. Um, you know, maybe uh, some of you guys aren't really any, you know, don't do anything in music, but are just really interested in this stuff. So, you know, on this podcast, uh, as you know, we love talking about music production related shit. Um, you know, the business side of music, uh, being music producers, that's, you know, really what this podcast is mainly focused on. So shout out to all of my creators out there. Um, you know, all of our day ones, if you're new to the podcast, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, uh, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening on, you know, SoundCloud or Apple Music. Hit that follow, hit that subscribe, and make sure you follow follow us on social media at Blapchat, B-L-A-P-C-H-A-T. Um, hit us up, man. Ask us questions, mm-hmm. comments, anything you guys want us to talk about. 106 episodes, though, we talked about a lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of shit. And, and I've noticed, like, once we hit, like, the 90s, mm-hmm. I feel like we realized that, like, we really have talked about a, a lot, lot of shit. stuff. And I feel like we also, like, go back to a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. too. Um, certain, you know, topics and talking points, like, consistently come up. Um, so, you know, I definitely want to dig into some of that shit today. Um, you know, dig a little deeper on that. But uh, first of all, uh, again, shout to you guys listening. Um, shout to all my creators out there. Uh, as you know, there's a couple things I want to I want to plug in here. Um, a new sample pack dropped. You already know uh, on BlackKids.com just dropped a, a loop pack for all my producers. It's called Emo Loops and Chords. Uh, really excited about this one because it's a lot different from the other sample packs that I released. So with this sample packs, it pack is really like centered around almost being like pop crossover. Mm-hmm. So like there's a lot of like pop elements in there. There's like big chords, uh, really interesting textures. And it's kind of like a mixture of like major and minor chords too. So it's a little bit of everything, but uh, I'm really, really excited about this sample pack and um, I've been getting a lot of love from it. So if you haven't checked out my new sample pack, Emo Loops and Chords, go check it out. You already know, blapkits.com, B-L-A-P-K-I-T-S.com. Go check that out. And yes, there will be a, uh, a contest I'll be doing for that. I have a cool, really, really cool uh, prize this go around. This is my third contest I'm doing this year. So shout to all the winners. Who, who won my contest in the past shout to uh shout to dope boys music for winning the throne loops contest shout to my man super miles mm-hmm. who won my most recent contest for the uh, infinity loops and uh shout to dream life radio who won my um infinity loops or no throne loops contest um so we're doing another contest for emo loops basically you're just going to download the sample pack flip a beat And then post it up on your Instagram with the hashtag emo loops. But, um, you know, you guys will hear more about that soon. I haven't officially announced it, Mm -hmm. but that's what's going on. Also, if you've been living under a rock, hopefully you haven't. But um, every month I've been traveling to different cities all across the world. And I'm booking a private studio in each city. And I'm inviting 30 to 40 upcoming music creators to come to the studio and hang out with me. And uh, you're going to be able to meet your peers as well. And uh, it's just an amazing networking opportunity. You get to come up there, plug the aux in, play your music. And uh, I'm giving you feedback, constructive criticism, 
uh, answering questions, all that good stuff. So um, there's a ton, t there's a bunch of footage on my YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and just type in Ill Mind, you'll find all the footage from my past the Aux private studio events. And uh, if you're interested in pulling up, make sure you get your ticket. All you have to do is go to my website, illmindproducer.com. Get your ticket. So next week, by the time you hear this, it'll probably be a few days or the event is probably happening at this very moment. But uh, I'm doing Charlotte, North Carolina on Monday, July 22nd. And then in August, I'm really excited about these. August, I'm doing Indianapolis and Detroit. <clears throat> and then Detroit's September, gonna yeah, Detroit's going to be crazy. Uh, we have a lot of good, good stuff lined up for Detroit. Might have a couple special guests come in. Mm. And then September, I'll be in Philadelphia, D.C., and then New York. October, I'm doing Denver, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles twice. I uh, might have to pop up. You got to come to the LA one. Come to the LA one. I'll that. probably be there for a week. Yeah. Locked in, so you got to pull up. Mm -hmm. You know, so you already know, guys, perfection is going to pull up, hopefully. Um, and then December, I'm doing Toronto and Montreal, which is going to be lit. Nice. And then November, I might. Uh, announce a couple like secret little pop up cities oh. in November. So that's what's going on. Pass the aux. If you want to pull up, make sure you go to illmindproducer.com, get your tickets. They're, they're selling out really fast. They always sell out. So um, the sooner the better on those. Uh, Perfection, what you been up to, man? What's, what's good? I've been what's... in the studio cooking. I I'm see excited you. about what I've been working on. I see you cooking. Super excited. Mm -hmm. I'm like just pushing <clears throat> these packs to these labels, you know? Yeah to these relationships that I've been building. Exactly. And like, you know, in the last episode, if you guys ha are listening and you haven't seen, listened to the last episode, go listen to it. But we, you know, the, that was the first episode of you being coming off of the engine room thing. Yeah. And, you know, you've built up a bunch of relationships yeah. from engine room. So now that you are in an engine room anymore and you're doing production full time, like, so you're locked in, you're making mm -hmm. beats all the time and you're sending packs out mm -hmm. so it's just progress right yeah yeah something's gonna stick i yeah, think for course. me it was just really getting back into the mental space of um just feeling creative so that way i can like enjoy what i'm doing and like my ideas versus feeling like I haven't made a beat in a while let me make yeah. a beat and it's like you know sometimes you i think for me at least when my mind is too cluttered it's hard for me to do certain things yep. you know and like the whole nine to five thing you know it was a great opportunity being at the studio obviously but i dealt with a lot of the business aspect mm -hmm. not just the creative and sometimes that can get in the way so you know doing that for a long time i just felt like i needed a break from it and just solely go back to the studio as a creative yep. like I, I dealt with a lot of the business and the creative aspect but now i feel happy just going there to make beats yep. and like talk about collaborating versus like helping everybody else with their stuff exactly. you know because it's more like pouring into me again exactly. and i feel like i needed that so you know i'm just excited i feel like even within working there and everything that i did even before you know being at engine room i developed and strengthened relationships mm -hmm. so now it's just easier moving forward anything i do to just be like yo here exactly like Sometimes like I, I'm like I'm not even gonna email you this beat. I'm gonna text it to you. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know what I mean. That's exactly. that's how it is. So exactly. you know, I'm grateful and I'm excited at the fact that even you know with all of that going on, I was able to strengthen relationships because that's the thing, right? A lot of people have the products, but they don't have the relationships. Yep. So like for me, I'm glad that I was able to strengthen relationships naturally and genuinely. So that way, when I do have my product, it's easier to just say yo. Exactly. Like, now, are you are you flipping other people's samples too? Yeah. So, can people send you samples? Yeah, I have so many people asking me. Are, they, um, are you getting a lot of them, or here and there, or? You know, I can't. I haven't answered everybody. Listen, guys. You know, but I have a ton of people that are like, yo, like, listen, send me shit. So. If you're listening right now, and you make sample packs, send them to Perfection. You can send me too. Yeah. But my send email your is fire. on my IG. It's perfectionproductions09 at gmail dot com. So. There it is. I'm Send always open packs. to, yeah. Send those packs. You know, the, the the collaboration thing is so big. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, obviously you've been producing this mm -hmm. whole time, but, you know, doing it full time now, when you realize, like, the sample pack thing and yeah. just the whole dynamic of being a, a sample pack creator mm -hmm. or just being a producer who makes melodies as opposed to producing the whole thing where yeah. it's like you're doing the melodies and the drums, mm -hmm. when you really 
when you're really in it and you're doing it, having melody loops just makes everything so easy. So much fucking easier. Easy. And that's why I love collaborating because, you know, you learn from people and, and you know, people bring something different to the table. Yep. Like, for instance, you know, I was just at home and I caught a crazy 808 bounce. And I was just like, y'all fuck with this. And I kept the 808, you know, and I was trying to add drums to it. And I just didn't really... Like, I kind of liked where I was taking mm -hmm. it, but I wasn't convinced. So right. I said, you know what? Let me just save this shit. Right. But I really felt strongly about my 808 bounce. I was like, yo, this is kind of different. Mm -hmm. It gave me that, like, the baby bounce, like yeah. that shug, mm -hmm. fun bounce. Do you so, start with drums? Are you starting with drums? Um, You know, honestly, it depends. depends. It, it really depends. Sometimes I'll have a sample <clears throat> loop and I'll, like, flip it and then add drums to it. Other times I'm like, let me get my drums first, right. get a fun bounce, and then find a cool sample to, to you know, throw in there. Right. So it really just depends, honestly. You know, I yeah. used to always start with melody, but after a while I was like, let me see what, what the vibe is like starting exactly. with drums. And sometimes it could be a different vibe, you know? So it exactly. all depends, but... You know, I was just in the studio with my boy, and he's like, yo, pull up some shit. And I was like, oh, I got this 808. And he mm -hmm. was like, nah. He was like, send it to me, because he uses Ableton. Yeah. So he's like, yo, just send me that. I sent it to him, and we just created some just created crazy something. shit. Yeah. And I'm like, you see, I, like my mind wasn't even going there mm -hmm. when I was adding the drums to it. So like, you know, when you have different people collaborating with you, it, it just adds a special sauce. It's you just know? special. Yeah, it's special. And, and guys, like, obviously, most of you guys that are listening are music producers. And if you are, you know, you really, I would, I would go as far as to say probably most people listening right now have never collaborated mm -hmm. with another producer. And I really, if you guys have been listening to this podcast and following my content, like that's one thing that I'm always pushing on people. And ev honestly, ever since I started really collaborating more, it just, like you just said, like it opens up so many creative opportunities right. and doors and you don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. Exactly. Like, you know, I, I can guarantee you that the majority of you guys listening right now are laying drums down, mm -hmm. clicking melodies, doing the melodies, whether it's melodies first or drums. And the process is fun, obviously, and all of us should continue to make beats on our own 100%. But when you start to get into this zone of like collaborating with people, you know, where like they're sending you sample packs and you're flipping your drums on top and chopping and then you're also uh creating sample loops you know and then sending them out to different people and getting that back or you're just flipping your own samples that's just it's just an amazing uh process you mm -hmm. know and and I, for me personally like when i first started getting into like collaborating with people what i used to do was i i just got into this habit of like making melodies first and then I would add drums later. So mm -hmm. like I would take, you know, let's say next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I would just make all melodies, like mm -hmm. no drums for three days. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like boot camp where I'll make a sample loop melody every hour. So it's like it'll take me one hour to do one. So I'll do like mm -hmm. four to six per day. Mm -hmm. And then by Wednesday, I got like almost 20 and then I'll take half of those and and on Thursday and Friday I'll flip my own drums and then the other half I'll send over to like Murda right. or Wanda mm -hmm. or whoever and then it could just spread out. So like that's a particular workflow that's worked for me in the past. And so and it's you don't have to be like a right. a big producer. Like it really doesn't matter. All you have to do really is just like connect with like one or two mm -hmm. other producers, like yeah. on some shit. Like Bregma, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. Like you know when they start collaborating that's how they did it so like find different people that are strong at certain things yeah dude and you're good to go and people that like you have good energy with exactly. right because there's definitely been times that i've tried to collaborate <clears throat> with people that i like genuinely fuck with yeah but just the vibe was just different when we there trying to create yep. and i have like two or three friends where anytime we sit down with each other it's just great energy mm -hmm. we're all comfortable you know, I don't feel like there have been people in the past that I feel like would intimidate me in a sense, mm -hmm. kind of like not allowing me to freely express my ideas or um, take in my ideas. Yep. 
And that was frustrating for me mm-hmm. versus like I have other friends that they'll be like, I like this, but maybe let's change the, the, the tone of the sample or let's add a note or let's exactly. take out a note. But they respect my contribution and exactly. that makes it more comfortable. Cause of course. It's like, damn, so like we're collaborating and you basically scrapped my whole beat. Yeah. And now like exactly. basically I'm just sitting on the sideline watching yeah. you make a beat. Like that's yeah, just exactly. whack versus like, nah, add this. I right, cool. You added that. Nah, let's switch it up. Nah, let's change the pitch. Exactly. You know, all of this. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm going to give you guys like a, a, a cool little like hint or like a little tip that you guys could just be mindful of, you know? So, what do you think about like if you're let's say Josh for instance right J Jules shout out to J Jules by the way so you guys know J Jules makes hot fire beats super fire he also makes hot fire R and B songs Mm -hmm. and he raps and sings he still ain't shit though but uh, he collaborates a lot right and so obviously you're not like this big name yet but you have like you have all these different talents right so you know you you can write you can engineer vocals right you produce and engineer as well so you have these four things right that you bring to the table now let's say you were thrown in a room with like a big producer like let's just say mike will right and so mike in that situation the leverage that mike will has is that he's mike will Mm -hmm. so he's his contribution is sort of just like a given right whatever he he ends up contributing is what it is but you as sort of like the lesser known producer your leverage is how many things are you good at right and so if you walk into a room and you're only good at laying drums down in FL studio then you're kind of limiting yourself to your capability and also you're limiting yourself with like showing people that you're valuable enough to be in that room and to contribute so when i'm in rooms with different people whether they're big or small producers i'm always gravitating towards the people that know how to do a lot of things Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that kind of like i don't want to say take control but they're in those rooms and they're very important Mm -hmm. uh players in those rooms so like you know i get guys who are literally unknown guys but like they start picking up a guitar and they can play crazy Mm -hmm. or they take initiative and they know how to like track vocals Mm -hmm. and it's like yo i fuck with you let's keep working Mm -hmm. you know and so i think the greatest asset as a producer especially when you're on the come up and when you're unknown is to take the time to learn how to do as many things as possible Mm -hmm. because once you start getting into these rooms people are going to start to recognize how much of a value right. you really are and you're going to get the respect from that too mm-hmm. and you're you're going to increase your chances of getting callbacks people wanting you to come back in yo i love that right. session that dude josh was great he played he, he played the guitar on his one joint can you bring him in you know next week to do this thing so you know and and, and we're all still learning too like i still want to learn how to like really play guitar mm-hmm. and like i'm okay on the keys but like i'm trying to get to like fucking you know what i mean i need them gospel chords like Mm -hmm. i need to to learn how to do different chord progressions and stuff like that so and that's one thing i'm practicing like one of my boys big len he's just super fire like Mm -hmm. just he's really he's fucking great at like a lot like you said like he's good at like chords he's great at hearing the music playing crazy melodies his drums is fire he's like he's a great engineer mixing engineer He's an overall, like, fucking dope creative. And mm-hmm. I love sitting with him because he just shows me, like, new things, new tricks. And yeah. I know that, like, okay, when I sit with him, he's a little stronger with the melodies. So he can sit there and Beethoven the shit out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I I learned from that. Mm-hmm. And I see, like, his process of coming up with melodies, a creative sound. And then I can add my two cents into it. Like, exactly. all right, I know that I'm not the strongest one that com- that could come with, like, the melodies. So you started off. You, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good with, like, I know my chords. I know the scales. But I need to get better at actually just laying Physically it down and feeling it. comfortable, like, just getting my hands all around a piano. He's better at that. So mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like. So he plays that role. Yeah. When and he, he's good at drums, too. Yeah. You know, so it, we just go back and forth. But back that's one forth. of his strong suits where I know if we're collaborating, like, exactly. you start that off real quick. You know, we flip the sample out, tell him, like, nah, add this, change that. And, 
like it's so valuable, you know, and I think for me, even working at a studio and kind of learning engineering and producing on my own before even considering working at a studio, mm -hmm. you know, it's helped me because I'll be in a room and I'm like, nah, you should add a delay to that. Or, you know, add reverb to that sound and it'll sound better. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. adding that engineer aspect, I think also changes it because exactly. it changes the sonics of the music too, you know? Exactly. So it's like, even me learning that, I'm grateful. But I still want to like learn shit like you said. It's practicing more my like chords and exactly. being able to fucking lay shit down. So when I sit with my friends and they're better at that than me, I feel great. I'm like, exactly. you know, it, it feels like the session's more powerful. Exactly, and it's crazy because the more and more that you guys find yourself in sessions and like I'm talking about like real studios, like there's a board, there's an engineer, maybe a couple runners. Obviously, you know perfection that's like your world you've mm -hmm. been in those situations plenty of times but like as an upcoming producer you know there's gonna be that one time where it's like your first time in an actual studio mm -hmm. you went from like making beats in your bedroom for x amount of years to you got invited to be in a big studio for 12 hours to work with an artist so you're gonna have interns you're gonna have runners in there you're gonna have an engineer probably who um you know takes care of like the microphone and all that stuff and the pro tools um and then you're gonna have your gear on you and so there's all these like things that you kind of like learn and there's like a couple little hacks like things that can save you time and and things that you'll realize being in these different rooms that you that can really help you and be valuable to what you're you mm -hmm. know trying to do so like you know one one little thing uh one little hack i'll call it a hack but one hack is um you know, when you're in the room, think about what your role is and think about sort of like what what the um, what the goal is and who's in there and what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of times when you're in there as a producer, it can go a million ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get invited to a studio and they want you to just hit play, play a bunch of beats. You're working with a rapper. You don't really have to like write anything you're just like playing beats they're gonna pick a few and then they're gonna record which is what most people think happens right, right? other times you you get called in and maybe the goal is to make something from scratch mm -hmm. uh, so that's when playing the piano comes in handy that's when being able to play guitar comes in handy that's when you know knowing how to use like chord generation mm -hmm. you know programs VSTs comes in handy um, and taking initiative that way so you know from my experience just all the different types of sessions that I've been into one really valuable thing that I learned is that when you take initiative on certain things and when you know kind of what the goal is for the day you can just act on those things mm -hmm. really quickly so if you know that you're there to hit play like have a folder ready right you know don't hesitate to to ask you know the a and r or the artist whoever's in the room like hey can i plug and play no you're here to do that right. so like the first thing you should do when you walk to that studio introduce yourself to the engineer be like hey okay so i have a I have an external hard drive i want to play some stuff we can plug into your drive or i can hook my my mm -hmm. uh you know computer up with my keyboard so it's really just like not waiting and taking initiative have you noticed that though uh perfection like when you're in when you you were at engine room and you see like these different types of sessions going on like what's what are some scenarios that you've seen like with producers coming in is it like is it them hanging out for a couple hours and like yeah, bullshitting it's all, it's and then all they different. Get and one thing i was gonna say too is just it also depends on who the session's mm -hmm. for right because like some people are some people work different than others you know like if you're with the rapper and like <clears throat> even if you aren't great at playing keys and they want you to start some shit from scratch like even like a lot of these rappers, you could have a ton of sample loops and just start flipping that and then add drums to it and you good. Sample loops, guys. <laughs> sample loops. If you if your fucking, you know, core game isn't strong, pull out those loops. But mm -hmm. now if you work with somebody that needs more like like a pop vocalist right, or something. Right. Then, you know, you need to be more of a musician so mm -hmm. to speak so i think one it depends who the session's <clears throat> for who's going to be in the session and like you said it goes so many different ways as a producer sometimes you go in there you sit for a couple hours before they're like all right press play you know you come in immediately they might say press play you know mm -hmm. it, it all depends on 
for who it is and what's going on. It can go a million ways, like you said. Exactly. And, you know, and but nine times out of ten, the goal is you're the producer. There's an artist in there that wants to record a song mm-hmm. and you need to provide that beat mm-hmm. one way or another. Right. And so um, I think being prepared is such a such a big thing. Mm-hmm. And then also too, really, you know, going out of your way to get to know the people in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like have a random conversation with the engineer. Right. And like ask him questions, mm-hmm. you know, just like break the ice, be like, yo, like how long have you been in the studio? Yeah. You and produ- like, like one my favorite thing is like when I and when I meet a new engineer, I'll just be like, Yo, you produce too? Right. <laughs> you know, like you make beats. Yeah. You're like, no, nah, you know, primarily engineering, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, what kind of mic do you have in there? Right. Just like little things that will get the conversation going because having a good relationship with the engineer will just make the session so much easier yep. and so much more effective. Yeah. You know? And even anybody else around because even if like the manager's there, like mm-hmm. you kind of want everybody on a team to feel comfortable with you, right? Because the engineer could <clears throat> fuck with you, yep. but the manager might not fuck with you and he might be like, yo, don't bring this dude back. Like, exactly. Bring another engineer in, you know? So it's also knowing, like you said, kind of, is like who the session's for, what you're there for, yep. but also knowing how to be comfortable in a room with people. Because if you're like an up coming engineer and you walk in a room like, let's say Davies, for instance, he has like 20 motherfuckers in yeah, his yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. And you might not be the first person that he's even like going to put like on the spotlight. Like you mm-hmm. might have to sit there, you know, for an hour or two if he's working with another producer or he's listening to somebody else's beats, you know? So it's like trying to be comfortable in that room and make your presence felt. Yep. Because, you know, you might get into a session where it's just you, the artist, and the engineer. Yep. And that's ideal, right? But you also might go in a session where they're like, oh, I fuck with your beats, yeah, pull up. Mm -hmm. But you might not be like, the priority in the session exactly. he might want to hear your beats but right. he also has beats from somebody else he also has his other homeboy pulling up that's a producer yep. and a ton of other friends <laughs> so it's really like reading the room and yep. kind of like trying to stand out without doing too much because you don't exactly. want to be that person that's trying to like um make their presence felt to the point where you're you're annoying you don't want to be like an alpha male yeah like, it's like this is not your session yeah. like you know, you don't want to be annoying. Yeah. So it can go a million ways. But I think it's all about staying professional, staying ready, having music on board, you know, and just kind of getting your presence felt by everyone in the room. Exactly. I'll give you guys just, uh, I'll give you a cheat code. This is the easiest, easiest cheat code. It's so easy. And we all have the ability to like pull this off. So the first cheat code is, and this goes back to why it's so important to be able to play the piano. If you don't know, if you don't know like how to play the piano that well, learn how to play one song, mm. right? Learn how to play like a good song, like 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 just really teach yourself how to play a song. And what you can do is letting your presence be known without being overly aggressive. Mm. If there's a piano in the studio, which a lot of these big studios have a piano, grand piano, whatever. Um, just go in there and start playing the piano. Right. Go in there and just play that little fucking, play that uh, what you know, like a like a Geodesy song mm-hmm. or like whatever, like like just a, play a song, something you're good at, and and just watch the room, the room, watch the eyes. They start. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or so even they start to just immediately tell themselves, Yo, that that. That or even play. or even then put your headphones on like mm-hmm. like if you're on a couch waiting put your headphones on mm-hmm. take out your hard drive start working yeah, you on your too. lap so then people be like yo yeah. what are you what are you, what are you listening to let yeah. me hear that because yeah. then they'll see like the momentum within yourself like you just got your headphones on exactly. your laptop everybody else like is doing their thing but mm-hmm. you in the corner like vibing and it's like yo, what are you working on let me hear yeah. that oh that's you're just dope. fucking around because sometimes too you do have to be cautious in the sense of where you just get up. Like, if you're an upcoming producer and no one knows you, you just get up and you start, like, yeah. just playing with everything in the room, they mm-hmm. might be like, dude, like, Right. But if you, play, if you play good. Yeah. No, if you play good, it's for like, sure. You don't want to be in there, like, singing and yeah. fucking, like, play some shit that's, like, that'll make people in the room feel good. Um, and then the second hack is to pull up with, with your guitar case mm-hmm. on your back. 
um, obviously you gotta know how to play guitar. Right. And it would be the same thing. Like if you have an acoustic, I would recommend an electric acoustic. Um, so if you have an electric acoustic, bring that joint, take it out. You know, if you're in the lounge, mm -hmm. just take it out and just start playing quietly. Mm -hmm. You don't have yep. to talk to anyone. Yeah. Just fuck around and play. Yep. And then immediately you're gonna command respect. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I've seen it a million times yep. in all these sessions. Every time I see some dude playing guitar, or they jump on a piano and they start playing, I'm like. And this, I don't even know who they are. It's just like, in my mind, I'm like, I respect you, man. Yeah, and We're also about, like, you want to like, hear. I, I want you to be in the room when we. Yeah, but you also want to hear more, right? Because I want to like, hear oh, more. You know how to play instruments, oh, like. Exactly. Let me hear what you got. Dude, I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen interns get in there, yeah. and just they were really good on the piano, and then they get invited to just be in the room. It's the ultimate, ultimate hack, um, you know. And even like, shit. I, I know for a fact this could work like you know there's this big studio uh, in LA called Record Plant I always shout them out and they have a grand piano mm -hmm. there book the B room you know and if you know how to play piano just step in there and just sh make your presence felt like you said without being overbearing, o overbearing. let the music speak That's it, it works man mm -hmm. it works it works you gonna try that Josh I just noticed Mountain Dew shirt yeah. that's fire Mountain Dew and Jurassic Park. Wow. Where, where'd where you get that? My girlfriend got it. Hey, wow. shout out to the girlfriend. Shout out to the girlfriend. Come on. Dude, dude. Do your best, yo. Fine. They know how to shop, know how to make you look good. They do, man. Know how to make you feel good, eat good. They really do. They really do. Um, Man, so shout to you guys. Listen, being in the studio is definitely an experience, but I always say this. Like, the only way you're going to gain experience being in the studio is if you collaborate with people. And, like, Josh, I know you're going through the same thing, too. Like, you record everything at home, mostly, right? Yeah. So you have all these different types of people coming through, like rappers, singers, and you engineer most of them, right? Yeah. So is it? would you say that a lot of your, like, engineering studio experience is, like, you're building it up yourself, right. like, at home, right? Yeah. yeah, so you feel, like, more comfortable doing it that way. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, guys, so, like, that's a good hack for you. Um, you know, but definitely, like, book studio time if you can so you can at least get yourself in that mindset, mm -hmm. you know? So um, so on my Twitter the other day, actually, I think it was yesterday, I wrote this thing. You know, I always tweet and people get mad at me. Well, fuck you guys. Um, no, nah, I got love for you guys. They're always saying that you shouldn't you <sighs> All this fake positivity, love. Yo, the so fake mad. positivity thing, man, is is crazy. I mean, we could talk about that, but like, um, there's this there is this thing I said here, um, and it's basically, oh yeah. So this was a couple of days ago. So I basically said that, um, you know, in a nutshell, it's like I did my pastel ox, and I made a, a video post about dealing with rappers who don't want to pay money mm -hmm. or rappers who are hard to deal with and josh i know you go through that too um because you're in that phase i've been through that phase perfection i'm sure you've been through Jesus. that phase dealing with people who may or may not be talented but just are just not good with the business side right and so i think the question is how do you deal with them or do you even have to deal with them right and so i i just think there's so many different factors that go into it but when you're talking about selling beats to rappers as a producer, which is what a lot of producers do, obviously, um, you're going to deal with rappers who don't want to pay, and you're going to deal with rappers who do want to pay or are professional. So there's two different types. And so, again, the question is, how do you deal with that? What's the the work around that? And And my argument is that you want to... Just from my experience, I think you want to understand the person more um, because when you're dealing with someone and it's just a transaction, it's really hard to it, it's, it's a little bit harder to do good business mm -hmm. because you're not really on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's like if you get a random person that hits you on Instagram, DM, yo, I got five hundred dollars I need to beat and you never met. You never got in the studio together. You never even talked on the phone. Everything's through email or DM. And you're like, I'll send you some beats. Here's my PayPal. And then they fall through. It's like, well, 
you don't really have like a tight enough connection right. with that person. So it's really difficult. I'm not saying that you can't make sales that way. People do it every day. But dealing with with business in that way is so much more inhumane and mm-hmm. it's not as intimate. So you really just want to like pick and choose your battles. Right. But I always say, man, like the best thing you can do is just get to know the person. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, just find a way to kind of like figure out how they can get their guard down you know like what makes them comfortable you know things exactly. like that yeah exactly and you know if they're hard to deal with you probably shouldn't be working with them right yeah if it's just too disres- <clears throat> if they're too disrespectful and just too hard then it's like it, it's always going to be bad for business you know whether no. now or later so you know you might have to step away from that but there are some people that genuinely just don't know how to do business because they just never been in too many professional settings or yeah. just never really you know had those experiences so exactly exactly and listen let me tell you guys something if you're an upcoming producer and you're working with different upcoming artists and you're working with one particular upcoming artist who's willing to pay you so let's say they're paying you for your beats they're mm-hmm. paying you for en- uh, studio time all that stuff but this person, this artist is really, really hard to deal with. I would go as far as to say either don't work with that person or or be careful because no amount of money will be worth the headache and stress mm-hmm. of dealing with that person. You know, and if that person's hard to deal with and he's paying you money, let's say he eventually blows up, he or she, the artist blows up. But they're really, really hard to deal with, really stressful to be around, don't have their business together, super talented, right? But just they don't have their shit together and they're hard to deal with. Imagine having to be around that person every day. Mm -hmm. Because if that person blows up, sure, they blow up. You're doing good. You know, you're, you're producing a lot of their stuff. You're making some money. But to have to deal with that is just it's not Mm -hmm. worth the stress. Yeah. And also maybe, you know, one thing you can do is ask if they have a manager, like who handles your business. That way they can see that you have some professionalism on your end Mm -hmm. and you'd rather do business a certain way. You know, it's like, do you have like somebody that handles your business for you, handles Mm -hmm. your transactions? Is it solely you? Right. You know, because if if they do have a manager and you do develop the relationship with the manager too, you know, that would show the artist like, okay, they're about their business. They're a little more professional. I can't really right. fuck around, you mm-hmm. know, and if they don't have a manager, which a lot of up and coming people don't, that's okay. But that's when you have to like figure out, is this worth the headache? Is it worth the headache? Sometimes that's it's the key. not. I'll tell you guys right now, man, just from my experience, it's never worth the headache. Yeah. It's never worth, you never want to be in a career where you're a thriving producer or getting to that point. And you get a phone call to get in the studio and you tell yourself, fuck, I don't want to see, mm-hmm. I don't want to see that person or damn, I really don't want to go into that session because that this person is such a headache and is so stressful to be around. It's just never, ever worth it. Yeah. You might as well go get a job. Cause... Yeah, I've definitely um, pushed people away or like said no to business opportunities because people were just too too unprofessional or too much to deal with i was just like look like it's money but like it's not worth the headache no it's not worth the headache if it's thousands of dollars consider it but if it's like a little two hundred dollars for somebody to just be a fucking dick then it's like exactly nah no I'm good on that. But, you know, everybody has their own kind of... They have their like, own thresholds. Thresholds. And, you know, <clears throat> maybe that $200 really matters to you. But, you know, just always kind of, like, make sure that you're doing good business exactly. with good people. And, you know, in the beginning, you're going to have to take those L's. Yeah. Like I say, like, in the beginning, you, you're you going to deal with people that may or may not be stressful to be around or don't have their business together. But you're making a little bit of money. Mm-hmm which is allowing for you to like pay your rent or like quit your job even. So that's good. But again, I, it always goes back to what we always say, like it, you're going to sacrifice in the beginning, but then you start to tip the scale to your favor. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you get that, you finally you get to the point where you have the luxury of 
only working with people you want to work right. with, right? And don't get it twisted. I mean, in this industry, there are a lot of dicks, a lot of assholes. So many. Like, aside from, like, artists or producers, like, you will deal with people, and I still do to this day. Yeah. You deal with people that are not the easiest to work with, that mm -hmm. are not the most friendliest. And sometimes you have to play that game, too, because that person might have something that you need. Yep. So you have to kind of play the name. That's the name of the game. Yep. Kind of like um, Combat Jack used to say, rest yeah. in peace, Reggie. Rest the peace game Reg, is the man. game. Yeah. So sometimes you got to play the game. Of course. But you have to know who it's with and what it's <clears throat> for and if it's worth it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you see a potential opportunity, if you need to be around this person and build around, build with this person or around this person and you see that there might be potential for bigger business later on, sometimes you, you got to like, just take that L and, yep. you know, that person might just, that might just be who they are. Like yeah. there are people I know in the industry that a few people are like, oh, yeah. Dick. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, that's and it's a small industry. That shit gets around. Yeah, and that's just sometimes people's personality, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bad look on them, but they might still have something you need. Yep. So, you know, you got to keep that in mind, too. But if it's somebody that's just, that doesn't necessarily really have what you need and you're just looking for it for, like, monetary value, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not necessarily worth the headache, you exactly. know? Exactly. And you can't be on your high horse too mm -hmm. early. Like, you have to earn that, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yeah. like we were just saying, you got to take those L's in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You got to work with people that, you got to be open to working with people that are hard to deal with, which could be potential people that could, mm -hmm. you know, help move your career along or make money, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But then again, you know, you get to that point where you can cross over. I think that's yeah. one of the most difficult um, decisions that you can make is understanding and knowing when is that right time mm -hmm. where I can start to shift the tipping scale a mm -hmm. little bit to you know every 10 opportunities i get i'm turning down right you know six mm -hmm. and i'm only doing four mm -hmm. where in the beginning you were taking all 10 yeah you know and again saying yes to everything in the beginning super important mm -hmm. you know even the shit that you don't want to do yeah. the people that are hard to deal with yep. you know if this is something you really want to do as a career to me, it's really important in the beginning to just, it, it makes it a lot easier to just say yes mm -hmm. to a lot, if not all things mm -hmm. in the beginning so you can start to get momentum going, right? Because it's like every opportunity that comes to us is a blessing. Yeah. Because yesterday that opportunity wasn't there mm -hmm. and now it is for whatever reason and that opportunity is there because of your talent or whatever that person or company thought you could bring to the table. So it's like, why wouldn't you say yes? You know what I exactly. mean? So. And then once that first opportunity comes, it just, again, starts to snowball. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when you're more successful, you can start to be a little more picky mm -hmm. with what you do. So yeah. it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I think about where I'm at in my career now. Even with all the success that I've seen, I still have such a long way to go. And there's still so many things I would do for free just because I have so much more to go. Like, there's certain people that would, that if they were to call me, and ask me to do something, I would do that shit in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll pay for my flight. I'll go out Facts. there and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Because that person has so much leverage and it's such and a big value. opportunity mm -hmm. and value. But then on the flip side, there's other things where it's like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. I don't I don't need, I, you can pay, for I don't care how much sure. money. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like this balance of yeah. like. I'm definitely at that point where right? I started to say no to a lot of shit and I feel good. It feels like, good. I feel good. Cause it's like, like damn, I, you know, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> I earned that. I earned that. No, but also you do. Get <laughs> you gotta to, earn that. No, right. And also you do get to a point where sometimes everything isn't always a, like I don't want to say not a good opportunity, but sometimes things. It's okay to not do certain things. Mm -hmm. Like I said yes a lot of times, and I still do. There's still shit that I do for free. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of shit that yeah. I still do for free. Yeah. Just to continue to develop those relationships, to mm -hmm. show people that they can rely on me, to show people that I'm loyal exactly. and that I'm valuable. Exactly. So that way when that money does come, you remember me. Like I have And it comes that, back to you tenfold. Yeah, like I have somebody that I work with now. Like, you know, we, we do some some work occasionally. It's been a little slow, but he's like, yo. He's like, I remember when I ain't have nothing, you was like, I got you. He's like, so trust me, once that money comes in, I got you. And I'm like, so I love, like, mm -hmm. you family, you know? Like, I never have a problem helping people that I genuinely fuck with yep. and that I know can bring me value, can yep. teach me things, you know? Yep. And, like, that's more than money for me, 
you know, because it's like somebody could give you five hundred dollars now, and you they might never call you again. Yeah. Versus you do two or three, four things for free for this person, and that, when that million dollars come, you get your hundred thousand. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or it's whatever because it you've is. you've at that point you've, you've proven you've, yourself. You've become such a big component mm -hmm. to you become an asset. Yeah, you be you you you've become a component and asset to how that ecosystem works. Yep. That if you were to disappear that situation would be the same. Yeah. So if, if you know, if it... And it, also, yeah. there might be other people that don't add the same value as you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but, yeah, there are definitely things now that I just be like, nah, I'm yeah. good, thank you. I'm good, like, love. Yeah, Enjoy. or like, what are the details? Nah, I'm, I'm good. not available. It's okay. But, you so, know, it, it all depends on the opportunity and who it's for and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, but... Also, too, there's something to be said about getting an inquiry about something and knowing that you have all the leverage yeah. but and, and you know that you don't necessarily want to do it but doing it because you want to give back or doing it because it's sort of a favor yeah and those are also very interesting mm -hmm. you know like the more successful you become the more scenarios where you have the leverage over certain things and then you can pick and choose sort of okay you know what i'm gonna fuck with this person mm -hmm. because i believe in them or because i like their music or you know what i'm not gonna charge them my usual rate because mm -hmm. i see this as uh, a way to give back to right. this person for whatever reason mm -hmm. you know and and those those um scenarios those actions like also go a very long way it's kind of like playing politics. Yeah. You got to play a little bit of politics. For sure. You know, you got to say yes sometimes when you want to say no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to say no when you might want to or should say yes. But exactly. you know what? I'm going to show you something. It, sometimes there, you can show your value by also saying no. Mm hmm That's true. You know in what I mean? In unique situations, that's true. Yeah, you can also show your value by saying no in unique situations mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. but you you gotta be smart of course you gotta you gotta be you have to yeah. know that no, you yeah. know what this is gonna work for this sure. is a bet that yeah. i'm willing to take yeah and not necessarily major things right yeah. it could be just a small thing where it's mm -hmm. like nah like that's 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 not for me well, i'm now. cool like, I'm, I'm, it's, it's <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> also too i don't know why i thought of this randomly but one i'm gonna call this another hack right but one thing that just has been working for me mm -hmm. so well like i'm talking about like night and day like i i credit this to like how i've been able been able to be so successful in the past four or five years compared to the previous five is and this is such a simple dumb thing every time i get a dm or a text from someone right that like i'm currently doing business with or is something that's like fairly important I'll reply immediately. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about, like, I've read it and I'm going to reply right now. And for a long time, I don't know if you do this too, but for a long time, I would just wait. I would read it and be like, okay, cool, I'll reply later. And then you forget. Yeah. And then you see the shit and it's like, oh, why didn't I reply to this person? And I think subconsciously, I don't know if you feel this way, but I did. But subconsciously, I always felt like I shouldn't reply too early because, like, it'll you look like I'm, too fast. Yeah, uh, if I pressed. reply too fast, I'm pressed and it'll make me look desperate. But what I've discovered is that it doesn't make you look desperate because yeah. I've hit people up. Shows you're on top of your game. Bro, it shows that you're on your shit. If anything, it's <laughs> the opposite. I've, I'll hit up super. Uh, su I, I'm not going to say who, but like, I'll hit up a couple of superstars who, like, should not be, like, who should be busy, technically. And then reply immediately. Facts. Like, in two seconds. Yo, what's good, man? Yeah, I got you. And then there's other guys I'll hit up who are not nearly as big. And, it's and like it'll take them response. days. Facts. And I'm like, bro, fuck you. Like, right. in my mind, I'm like, man, fuck you, man. Right. So it's I like... I just noticed that with one of like my friends. It's like an ego thing. I noticed that with one of my friends. And I don't think it's an ego thing. Well, he, he works... It's low-key He works at a label, but... Right. I just think that he you know no one's too is. busy to exactly. not reply if you don't reply that's a conscious decision yeah unless your phone is off yeah or you're genuinely busy but let's be but real but one thing no People... one thing i would say <laughs> one thing i would say that it happens to me a lot is I do have a lot of people reaching out to me like via text. I can have a ton of conversations yeah, so you throughout have to the go course of a day yeah. so like if somebody reply like reaches out to me and maybe like 
it's something that I shouldn't get back to them quickly. Like it, it's not immediate or I'm, right. I see it, I get busy. And then other people are hitting me up. That text message goes at the bottom That's of the thread. That's when it's okay. And then I'll be like, fuck. That's that when it's okay. To me. That's when it's okay. But that is very rare yeah. for a lot of people, even superstars. Yeah. I'm telling you guys. So, like, if you're not a superstar, you're not at that point yet. Mm-hmm. Or maybe if you're like a little C level, whatever, like, it just helps so much when you to reply respond. because mm-hmm. you there's a good chance that you're going to forget. Yeah. And you might forfeit a life changing opportunity. opportunity yeah. So, it's like, all you got to do is just reply real quick. Mm-hmm. Bet. And then sometimes whatever. what you can do is. Like the first reply is the fastest, and then the next one you can you kind can of like, slow down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I've done it could that. Be like, like a couple hours. Yeah, or I've whatever. done that. I'll reply quick to the first or second like question or whatever, and, and then, then put like, it away. the other ones like next ten minutes. Yeah, t- you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean. Like, yeah. but as long as like I hit you like almost immediately, you see yeah. that I'm like on top of it and like I'm ready to have a conversation. Yeah. But then I probably got a little busy. So, exactly. Like, just give me a couple. Exactly. Minutes, you know what I mean. There's this um name and, the game. The game. Exactly. The game. There's this. A&R that that's, uh, I'm good friends with and um, every time I go up, get to LA I hang out with him and this guy like fucked my head up so like every time he would have an idea or just something would come up to like hit someone up or like do put something into play he'll literally do it on the spot like cause you know a lot of times when we have like an idea like oh yeah maybe we should get you know this artist okay. to jump on this song alright I'm gonna hit him up and you tell yourself, I'll hit them up later, and then you forget. You never do it. But this guy, he's like, yeah, we should get this artist. All right, cool. Call. Or like, cool, let me text him right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Just the whole point is like taking action like in the moment mm-hmm. while you're excited to do it. I think that helps so much. Mm-hmm. It really does, especially if you're up and coming and you're really just trying to get your shit up. Like, it works. Mm-hmm. I think it works. All right, guys, you already know what time it is. What up? here with perfection all right we're here. Ready. so we're about to do this segment on the podcast called flap or crap okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our email and we're going to choose at random your beat submissions uh, that you guys sent to us and we're going to play a snippet of your beat if we like the beat we'll give you a blap and if we don't we'll give you a crap and we'll try to give you some constructive criticism uh, and keep it moving like that. So if you're interested in submitting a beat to this segment called Blap or Crap, which you will be chosen randomly, all you have to do is send an MP3 attachment of a beat to info at blapchat.com. <coughs> Subject line, Blap or Crap. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we'll go like that. So our first submission for today is by... I think it's pronounced I V I up. Here we go. That was Ivy Eye up with the submission. I'll start it off. I'm going to give it a crap. Um, It wasn't terrible. Mm -hmm. It wasn't terrible. I wasn't a huge fan of like that. The drums were cool. Mm -hmm. I thought they were a little sharp. Like they were kind of snappy, but like something about them just... It was just, I, I think the big thing for me was the melody. I really mm-hmm. wasn't big on that melody. That yeah. rah, 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 rah. 
I don't know. I think it could be tighter. It wasn't the worst beat, but I'm going to crap it. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to crap it. I yeah. actually wasn't mad at the beat. I mm-hmm. think it has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the arrangement was good. I like the direction he was going, but I do feel like that melody kind of after a while, I wasn't really rocking with it. No. Um I think the mixing can be a tad bit better. Mm-hmm. I definitely would change that snare, though. Yeah. The snare, I would right? Change the, the snare. snare. Yeah, the was snare. Was it whack as fuck or was it? It wasn't whack as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the snare wasn't uh, whack as fuck. Okay. Like, I can see why he put it there, but I think, right. like, that specific snare for all of the other sounds just doesn't go. Exactly. Um, and then he had, like, I think, like, some piano notes. Mm-hmm. I would, like, maybe boost those down, but it wasn't a bad beat. It yeah. just, yeah. It just it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. Yeah. So crap. All right, our next submission is by Christian Bortley. Bortley. Okay. Peace, child. that because I do like the drum pattern I just I that could be great that could be a great I think that the drums way. didn't do it justice mm-hmm. like I wasn't crazy about the swing yeah this the drums had a specific swing I yeah. think it just didn't really match those chords mm-hmm. I don't know it was creative I love those chords, though. I like the chords. I did kind of want to hear something a little brighter, too. Like, I mm-hmm. would want to hear this, Another those thing. same chords maybe layered with, like, an octave up. Mm-hmm. You know, like a little brighter. Something. Um, Like a brighter piano sound, like, yeah. under it. But it wasn't a bad beat. Mm-hmm. It was refreshing. I like the direction, but I do agree with the swing of the drums. It yeah. kind of was like... I was trying to figure it out still. Yeah, it's hard to... Yeah, exactly. Because when you have, like complex chords like that and then you have complex drums mm-hmm. it could get a little tough mm-hmm. I think that's a preference thing mm-hmm. I, there's probably people out there that would hear that mm-hmm. and everybody like that beat but I can't blap it because it gotta be it gotta be great you know <laughs> but I think that beat definitely has potential so mm-hmm. I am gonna crap it but I think that one has a lot of potential mm-hmm. for sure or as Glam would say potential <laughs> potential okay our last submission for today is by Dokon D-O-K a A N. Here we go. Emotion, like mis- sure. yeah, yeah, like I feel like mysterious. Like yeah. I'm watching something where people are like being lurky yeah. and like exactly. I'm 
Okay. Hmm. 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 I'm gonna blab that. Blab. Blab. I can't be fake. Blab. <laughs> I can't be fake. Listen. I'm a blab it. I feel it like down. it was different. There were some things that I wasn't really um, convinced with, like certain sounds and things like that. But overall, I think oh, because it evoked emotion and it like made me kind <clears> of like <throat> imagine being at a place, mm -hmm. and it had like it was good energy. I like where the BPM is, you know, the movement. So I'm a blab that. I'm not yeah. gonna. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm gonna blap it too. But you can definitely see it licensed for sure. This so. this can be you can put this in a YouTube video. This could be licensed in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And like like you said, I think the important thing is like emotion. Like it evokes emotion. That's what music is supposed to do. You know, so yeah. I mean, will this be like a smash record? No. Mm -mm. But like you can use that somewhere for sure. Yeah, like, I think it's different. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's different. YouTube it smoky be... eye tutorial, YouTube <laughs> video. That's that shit. It so. sounds futuristic too, so yeah. you yeah. might be onto something. Exactly. Good shit. It's over nine thousand. What are you listening to right now, El? Before we go, what are you fucking? Man, with? I don't know. I'm all over the place. I'm That's, all over the place. I, feel that. I like listening to the new stuff, but honestly, like if I compare new music from 2018 compared to new music in 2019 2018, 2018 by a long for shot. sure yeah like this time last year there was so we had time. a lot of legendary moments so and this is not time. taken away from the people that released this year like cole's having a hell of a year mm -hmm. dreamville compilation i love that compilation yep. i'm listening to that a lot i'm listening to ed sheeran's album a okay. lot i haven't touched that so it's good. good yeah there's I moments saw the features there. it's kind of wild crazy yeah it's a good play it's a good front to back um, there's definitely moments this year, but like, you know, I'm I'm like more focused on like my own stuff, just like listening to stuff I'm working on. Um, but I like to keep up. But mm -hmm. compared to last year, man, I'm still waiting for like that. Uh, you know, but I feel like you know the end of the year is near. Yeah, there's a lot of people that haven't dropped. There's a lot so of people like, that haven't dropped. I feel like the end of the year might be better than the first. Better than the first for I sure, because it's like Ross is dropping next month. <laughs> Rihanna posted Nas is dropping Nas is dropping By the time you guys hear this Nas dropped already yeah. so Rihanna posted something funny where she was like Did you see that? Yeah. Where she's like the Navy five, she's like it, it, basically like there's a, there's 5 months left yeah. of the year still like she yeah. said 2019 and everybody's like it's 2019 when? but she's like still yeah. not over Still not over So her I feel like Big Sean yep. has to drop something I think it's going to be a crazy third fourth quarter mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be way better than the first. Like, yeah. if we didn't have a summer anthem, we might have a winter one. Yeah. Who knows? We might need a winter anthem. You know what I'm saying? Because, so. I mean, who's who has the summer anthem? I feel like Megan Thee Stallion is moving. Could That's be Megan. It could be Old Town. Some people say Old so Town Old Road. Old Town Road. So, you know, could Old be a Khaled Road. record. It could be the Drake and Chris Brown. Like I think I, Old Town Road has had it for a minute. Like, Old Town Road is dominating yeah. the whole year. Mm -hmm. This is Lil Nas X's year. I'm so he happy will be game. nominated and he should win the Best will, New Artist he will Grammy. Win. He will win. Best I New Artist? Like if they don't give it to him, like, It'll be a little on. weird. I think it'll be a little I weird. I think he'll win. I think just everything he's, he's doing right, not even Old Town <clears> Road. <throat> I like that Panini song. I love Panini. I Love like that Panini. Panini song. I like Shout out to my guys, uh, Day Trip. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my dude, Keo, Young Keo. You guys are, are, yeah. are really, man, like, we're entering a new era, man. And, and really he had proud a moment, guys. too, you know yeah. what I mean? For the producers, of course. Amazing. But for himself, like, he kind of, you know, changed the game a little bit he did. there. He did. So, I think a lot of people are watching him. A lot of people are trying to study him and dissect him, but mm -hmm. yo, Lil Nas X, keep I keep going, it. man. He's I like him. You're doing your shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Really amazing. Episode one of six. Later. We are out of here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We will see you guys next show. Peace and love. We out. I had to shave the beard. <laughs>